1 Corinthians chapter 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, talking to saved people, which I preached unto you, which ye have received, the gospel, wherein ye stand, in the gospel, by which also ye are saved, by the gospel. If ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Again, it's going back like the Lord's Supper, reminding yourself, getting back to Bethel, reminding that spot where you and God met the first time at the cross, where Christ died for our sins. For I deliver unto you first of all, that which I also received, Paul received it, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So Christ's death can be found in the Old Testament. It can be written. It can be read. It was fulfilled on how and why and where and when Christ died. It was prophecy. And we learned about prophecy last night. That's one of the best gifts over tongues. And that he was buried. We know he was buried. He was put inside the tomb. It wasn't even his own tomb. And the Bible speaks about he was he was buried in that tomb that wasn't. He was buried with the rich. He wasn't rich. But Joseph of Armenia was rich. And that he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. So you can find a resurrection. Many men have died. But none of them but Jesus died by the scriptures. Some men were resurrected out of the grave, and yet they died again, are still in the grave. And only Jesus Christ, by the scriptures, is the death, burial, and resurrection. Christ, see, when we come to salvation, we come to the cross. We receive Christ as our Savior. We come to the empty tomb, and we become Christians. Our mark as Christians and not religion is that the tomb is empty. There are other religions around the world. They go visit their leader. You can see the dead corpse. Well, you have a dead religion. And that he was seen of Cephas. That's Peter. Then of the twelve. And after that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. That's kind of interesting because you can bring... I mean, if you could resurrect these people, but... in. The, in the time that Jesus died, you could bring these 500 people to court. You could bring them before the Sanhedrin. They wouldn't believe. You could bring before the Roman government. I don't know if they would believe. But 500 people, 512 people acknowledged they saw Christ after his death, burial, and resurrection. And it says, brethren. I don't think Jesus, when he resurrected, I don't think he appeared to Pilate. I don't think he appeared to Cephas. Uh, uh, no, uh, I can't think of what, Caiaphas. I don't think he put, appeared to anybody who did not believe him. I would assume he showed up to Mary and Martha and Lazarus. I would assume. I would assume that they were of the numbers. Of whom the greater part remain unto this present. So, Go down there. Go go look for it. I'll give you a list of names. You go ask them. How's that for a testimony of Paul? This says it's written about 59 AD. I will give you a list and you can go ask those people. Most of them are still alive. But some are falling asleep. Some, some have died. Look what Paul calls death for a Christian. Sleep. And after that, he was seen of James, then all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. And you remember, he was on the road to Damascus. For I am least of the apostles. And I am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Now, see, Paul's always got that. Listen. If you confess your sins, God is able to just to forgive us our sins. But he still got that guilt. There are still sins in my life. I know they're under the blood of Jesus Christ. But yet, Lord, I am so sorry I did that. I know you don't know what I'm talking about. Isn't it, you know, your guilt and God doesn't know what you're talking about. 
Because God would say the same thing to Paul. I don't know what sins you're talking about. You're under the blood. You're washed. You're clean. That all happened before you were saved. You got it right. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which is bestowed upon me, was not in vain. I mean, that grace God given me, I gave it back. I gave something back. Hope we all do that. But I labored more abundantly than they all. I can't say that. I don't labor for the Lord much. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believe. I gave you the message. Here's the testimony of the gospel. Over 500 people. Ye yourselves are believers. By faith. That's the gospel. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again according to the scriptures. And there are eyewitness accounts. And there are people all these years since this time has believed with their heart and has lived and tasted God is good. Now trouble. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Now, this would be the Sadducees. They would say this in Luke 20, 27. Now, to say, is it the Sadducees? I don't think so. But there are some people in the Corinth area. Well, there's no resurrection. We die and that's it. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then... Is Christ not risen? How do you know you're going to be resurrected when you die absent from the body, present with the Lord? Because Jesus is at, Jesus is present with the Lord. How do you know we're all going to go up one day in the rapture if we die? Because Christ arose from the grave. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. So, okay, people. Here, listen, put our crosses around our necks, put them on our arms, put them up on the church, put them on the outside of the building, the cross, Christ died on the cross, that's great, the blood was shed, Acts 20, 28, but the main part of salvation is the empty tomb. If he was still in that tomb today, then we would have a vain religion. If they could find a bone of Jesus Christ, it's a vain religion because the Bible says not of a bone would be broken. What seals me as a Christian over religion? That empty tomb. That Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father right now. That's what makes a Christian. It sure ain't a Catholic Christian because all their people are still in debt. They're still in the ground. They're still in morgues. They're still wherever they put them. No one has seen a risen Pope. And yet 500 people have seen my risen Savior. And then, you know, the Catholics, they, they digest them and kill them every day. There are people that take the Mass every day. That's not that's not the gospel. For Christ died for our sins. It's not Christ died for our sins. Christ died for our sins. Christ died for our sins. And in Easter, that's not the gospel. And according to Hebrews, he sacrificed once. The gospel is one time. He died for our sins, according to Scripture. He was buried once, and then he arose from the grave once, according to the Scriptures. That is our salvation. The empty tomb is me, a Christian. So if you don't have a risen Savior, and we're going to see later on, I don't know if we've done it, I think it's 2 Corinthians. Paul's going to say there's another Christ, another Jesus. That have not resurrected out of the grave. So an important thing is when you deal with people, you better have the resurrected Christ. You better have the virgin born Christ. You better have the Christ that is God's Christ. Because there's another Christ called Antichrist. Don't get them putting their faith and belief in him. If Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. So I don't have vain preaching. Now people may think I preach vain. Not according to Paul. And faith is also vain. Yea. And we are found false witnesses of God. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ. 
whom ye raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. So there's no resurrection, and Jesus Christ didn't come out of the grave, and we're liars. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Now watch this. Ye are yet in your sins. Now what do you do when you get the cross? I serve in hugging grace with a rugged cross. No, that's worshiping a piece of wood. I serve the, the God that died on the cross, the, the God that saved you, that, that went in that tomb, and I serve the resurrected Savior that came out of that tomb for my sins. Remember, between the time of the cross and the empty tomb, what happened to sins? He went down in hell and deposited them where they belong. My sins wouldn't have been taken care of if he's still in that, that, that tomb of Joseph Armia. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sin. So you absolutely need the resurrection. So when you see crosses, you're only getting half the picture. He died, yes. He was buried and he arose from the grave. Then they also which are fallen asleep, those who have gone to death in Christ, are perished. They're gone. They're not going to heaven. They're not going to glory. They have no hope. Oh, well. Like religion. Anybody who dies in religion has no hope. It's vain. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all, we are of all men most miserable without the resurrection. If there's no resurrection, it, it's vain. I'm going to perish and I'm miserable. So you see, you got to have the three. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. Well, how do you show a resurrection that's something you can buy in a jeweler shop? Or have a craftsman make a resurrection? How do you do that? How do you make the resurrection an idol? An image that we can worship in the Baptist church? We can't. We make it by the mark that I am a Christian. And I am saved and washed in the blood. I will not perish by that resurrected Christ. There it is. It's the thing you can't picture. The thing you can't make. It's something that Christ finished. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. You're going to sleep, tired, rest in the body, in the grave. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die. Thank you, Adam. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So when you die, you're either going to die in Adam or you're going to live through Christ. There's your two options. For every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming, second, I mean the, the rapture, the Christians who are going to be caught up, the Christians who have gone to sleep. Then cometh the end. Then the end of the tribulation. And the millennium. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. Even the Father. When he shall have put down all rule. And all authority. And all power. That's yet future. There is resurrection in the tribulation. There is a resurrection after the tribulation. There is a resurrection after when this earth and all that is gone. For he must reign. Till he has put all his enemies under his feet. And the Roman Catholic Church has a funny thing. They, she, they have Mary standing there with, with the serpent under her foot. Go look up the pictures. You'll find them on, on, online. Of Genesis 3.15. They make her the woman's seed. Mary. Wrong. 
The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. You know what we're not going to see in New Jerusalem? We're not going to see death. We're not going to see graveyards. We're not going to see morticians. We're not going to see gravestones. Death will be gone. For he has put all things under his feet. Would you think all things are under Jesus' feet today? But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifested that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. That's God giving him the power. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, Jesus, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, God, that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Now that's, that's some weird verses we're getting into here now. Because God and Jesus are the same. But here the Son is put subject to the God. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? I have no idea. If, they, if the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? Big question mark. Is there a baptism for the dead? I don't know what Paul's talking about. I'm going to say that. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? What's the jeopardy? They're being rocked by stones. They're being beaten. They're going to jail. They're losing property. They've got people fighting them and all that. The preaching of the death, burial, and resurrection will bring all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I protest your rejoicing, which I have in Christ, Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. 1 Corinthians 17, 32. Man, this church is having a hoopla. Paul. He's putting his body under subjection. He's putting it in the grave. He's trying to live right. And this church is just woohoo. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. He's had all kinds of troubles and all kinds of problems. Corinth, the Corinthians, man, they're having good times. Paul's being persecuted. He's fighting. He's got to have his armor on. And meanwhile, the Corinthians are having a good old time. That's our church aid. What advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Alright, so if the dead doesn't rise, there's no resurrection. Why am I getting tortured? Why am I getting beat? Why don't we just let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die? If there's no resurrection of Christ, get a hamburger, grab some drink, and just keep doing it till you die. That's it. That's what eternal life would be if there was no resurrection. And yet, I, my body, again, I am being subject to, to troubles and trials and tribulations. Be not deceived. Plus, you, you guys are rejoicing. You're rejoicing, in fact, saying that there is no resurrection. You're going along with the world. The world doesn't want a resurrected Christ because they would know that Christ is God. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not not the knowledge of God. I speak to your shame. Some of you Corinthians, man, your conversation, it is so wicked. You're making yourself vile. And you don't even have the knowledge of God when you're speaking. Shame on you. And he's right into brethren. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up? With what body do they come? Okay, that's a good question. 
I don't think he's. I don't think he, he, he's authority. I think. All right, here's a question, Paul. Okay, we do resurrect. What, what, what's my body going to look like? Wouldn't you like to know? Thou fool. That which thou sowest is not quickened, alive, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. And what he's saying is take a farming. You take a little seed and you put it in the ground, right? And it dies. That seed will die in the ground. That plant comes up. Does it come up as a seed? No, it comes up as a beautiful thing, whatever you planted. You take that which is dead in the ground, us, our body. Ooh, you wait to see how beautiful it's going to be when it comes up as a plant. Do that with a garden. Take those little seeds, put them in the ground, and watch what beauty comes up. Goes in the ground dead, it comes up what? Alive. That's what he's saying. But God giveth it a body that as pleaseth him, and to every seed his own body. So we're going to have our own body. Every one of us. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beast, no evolution, another of fish, and another of birds. Look what Paul just said here. There is no theistic evolution. There's no, we came from gorillas, came from whatever they say. No. Gorillas are different from men, and men are different from apes and fishes and birds. Put that in high school. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon. Another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. So there are things that are different. We're not all alike. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. You're going to rot. You're going to decay. Your body's going to decompose. It is raised in corruption. We will not be zombies. You take someone that you buried in the ground, they're going to rot. But they're going to come up in rotable and whole. Won't be guts hanging out. Won't be eyeballs hanging on out. And won't be blood and all that. It's going to come up uncorrupted. Like Jesus' body. His body did not corrupt at all. You may decay. It may be within time. A lot of the saints, Paul and them, their bodies are decay. But when the Lord calls us at the rapture, those bodies that have been dead are going to come back together and they're never going to rot again and they're never going to need underarm deodorant. They'll never need a bath or shower or soap because you'll never stink again. It is sown in dishonor. So why make a funeral a big, big idea and big glorious thing when the Bible says that funeral, that burying the body is dishonor. It is raised in glory. If I were to die right now and, and, and the rapture to happen, all right, my soul is present with the Lord. But when my body, when the rapture happens, this body is going to be stinking, it's going to be rotten, it's going to be bone, whatever. No honor, nothing you can do with it. But when it comes out of that grave at the rapture, it'll be glory. It'll be incorruptible. It is sown in weakness. What can, I mean, what can a dead man do? Nothing. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. See, this is before and after. This is when you bury the body, and this is when the rapture happens. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. Jesus said, flesh and bones cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. 
Genesis 2. The last Adam, Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit. Jesus Christ was made to give us life. How be it? That was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is spirit. We're, we're natural. We're not spiritual today. We're natural. But when we get resurrected, we'll be spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly, ashes and ashes. The second man is the Lord from heaven, godly. As is the earthly, such are they also the earthly. If I'm going to die and be buried, I'm going back to that dirt. As is the heavenly, such are they also that are the heavenly. And God called me out of that thing, man, there will be no more flesh, no more dirt. No more curse, no more sin. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, look, look at this, this is the earthly, we shall also bear the image of heavenly. So what's our body going to look like? It's not going to look like anything like this. It's going to be a heavenly body. Holy, pure, right, without death, without decay, without sin. We can't even picture it. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. Your blood's not going to be in heaven. And your flesh. That body's going to be some kind of spirit body. Cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. You're never going to, you're never going to decay. You'll never have a cancer. You'll never have problems after the resurrection at the rapture. You'll never have arthritis. Your bones won't become brittle and break. You won't need hip replacements. You're going to get a spiritual body. You're going to get a body like Adam had before the fall. We're going to get a body like Jesus Christ after his resurrection. Behold, here's another mystery. I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Many Christians will not die. But we shall be changed. Hmm? We shall all be changed. Dead and those are still alive. We're going to have a change. A change means you take something and you, you do it to something else. In a moment. In the twinkling of the eye. That's quick. At the last trump. Now there's the reference to the rapture. For the trumpet shall sound. And the dead, those who have gone to sleep and died, shall be raised incorruptible. Their bodies are going to be together. There will not be zombies. Everything will be where it's supposed to be. And we shall be changed. Our, if we're living, we're going to go through a change. This flesh, this body, blood and all that is going to go through a complete change. For the corruptible, that's what I am right now. If you don't think you're corruptible, don't take a shower, don't use deodorant for two months. And you'll find out you're corruptible. Must put on incorruption without decay. And this mortal, that means you're going to die. Mortician. Mortal. Dead must put on immortality so when you die in christ you will never die again so that's why they say sleep even though that body's in the grave it ain't dead it's immortal it's just resting waiting for that resurrection day when the lord calls and changes it and gives it the new characteristics that we don't have today so when this corruptible, right now, me talking, see me, pinch me, hit me, has put on incorruption at the rapture, 
And this mortal shall put on immorality at the rapture. Because if the rapture don't happen in my time, I'm going to die. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. When God makes you immortal. When God makes you incorruptible. Which he has through the blood and the testimony that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Was buried and arose again according to the scriptures. We do not see death. But we will see death, some of us. But in the, in the state of God, we do not see death. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. But you may take this seed, this body, and plant me in the ground. But you ain't going to keep it in the ground. At the moment of the rapture, death is gone for a Christian. O oh, death, where's thy sting? O oh, grave, where's thy victory? Not in anybody's got the resurrection, not somebody's got the burial, and not somebody's got the, the death, according to the scriptures. See, you can plant a loved one in the ground, in a grave. If they're saved, that grave will not have no victory. That grave won't be able to say nothing when the Lord comes along. Look at Lazarus. Uh, Martha tried to stop him, didn't, didn't she? Lord, he stinketh. What's he mean? Hey, Lord, he's corrupting. Martha, shh. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus is a great picture of what we're going to be when the Lord calls us. The sting of death is sin. The wages of sin is death. And the strength of sin is the law. The law makes us sinners. That's what the law does. But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, we've got the victory. We're still living. And every one of these Corinthians, he's writing to, including Paul himself, their bodies are buried and their bodies have rotted. But the victory, they are present with the Lord today, right now, their body, wherever they buried it. But oh, when that last trump blows and that trumpet, that trump goes, their body comes back together. The grave can't hold them. So death, bye. See you later. Say bye bye to the graveyard or wherever you're buried, wherever you be. And some of us are not even going to see death. Therefore, my beloved brethren, talking to the Corinthians. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Death may be vain. There, you know, if there's no resurrection, that's vain. But you keep going, you keep moving, you keep fighting, you keep laboring for God, and it won't be for nothing. You'll get something. That's what, it's, it's what the, he calls it for the Christianity in true sense is, yes, the cross of Jesus. And yes, they buried him. But it was finished. At the empty tomb with Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of the Father today, alive and well, and waiting to come and get us. That's Christianity. And there are people out there just like the Corinthians. There's no resurrection. Huh? You're a liar. Because over 500 people saw him.